So in my last video, um, I had just need to finish uh, printing some brackets off. Um, so I just finished the last one. Now again, I'm going to leave the bar going across open on this side. So the next thing I want to do is put in a light system. So for right now, I'm just going to use these uh, brackets. And these take um, two big flat washers. And um, this particular light has magnetic mount on the back. So I'm going to do that and slide it around. So I was looking around for different lighting options. Um, and I settled on one that has a battery that's rechargeable. Uh, that way I could uh, charge it up and not have to worry about an extra power cord. Um, this one in particular runs a USB, so I'll go ahead and do that. So now, with one light, um, right on top, have it covering the whole printer. So for this light, um, it's dimmable. And it's USB recharged, so um, I know I made the brackets here with holes in them so I could run cords through. And I still have that option, but um, this just keeps some of the cord work down if it's uh, off, if it's self-contained. Finch LED. And with this system, you can clamp it onto the sides or the top. Um, next thing I'm going to do is over here, I know in the last video I put this uh, white panel on. I'm going to move it over to the back. Um, and I'm going to put clear sheeting over the sides. So that'll be my next step. So. Let me check something with this real quick. Yeah, so by putting the whiteboard in the back, get some uh, reflection and drops off some of the glare that comes from the back. And in the future, I'm going to run a time-lapse camera through here, so this will be a nice flat background to go against. Okay, so for sheeting it, I did get some of this 2mm um, clear drop cloth. And as you can tell, it's not completely clear. Um, I think for right now, if I just want something that closes up, I could go with this, um, but for the front, I'm going to end up making, um, probably just end up making a little frame with this or leaving it, well, I want something to cover it, so I could do this for the top and sides, and for the front I'll make a clear door with some saran wrap. So. Yeah, I'm just going to tape it to some points along the frame and wrap around and for the door I'm just going to make a separate door. And on this side I have to kind of slot for the power box as well. Okay, so uh, I finished sheeting around the outside, leaving the top a little bit open, and I still need to think about the door up here. So let me take you around. And so here's about 90% completed. 
And with this, let's see here. This also helps diffuse light. Uh, what I did on the edges here is, um, if there was an edge that kind of that I had to cut, did end up uh, putting some tape reinforcement around it. And I'm going to leave this part of the box open. Uh, this way, I could get to the cord, power line, and leave the fan so it's blowing out. But let's see here. So this material does diffuse light, which is good. Um, gives you something more to play with. And cool thing about using a dimmable light is sometimes it actually is easier to see things if they're darker or dimmed compared to completely bright. So yesterday I tried covering this with uh, the semi-transparent semi uh, drop cloth and I looked at it and it was going to be too opaque for this project. So for the door I just made a simple uh, PVC frame and to sheet it this is just a uh, plain household plastic wrap that I just wrapped once around both sides of the um, frame. And this will be my door, and it's just going to rest on the uh, on the mountain here for the light. And this way, it keeps people out, and it rests up here. So I don't. I was going to make a hinge, but I'll have to play with that later. And when it's done, it just flips up. But it's still nice, and clear, so you can see inside. So I think I'm just going to. I'm still going to leave the back panel on. But I'm going to go ahead and just, um, since this is going to be the back side, I'll uh, put any tape or anything over here. And I'm just going to wrap the um, other sides with this, even though I might play around with this. But at least get this side covered. This side, I might just leave on its own. So I, um, I'm writing the pipe, the plastic on the inside of the pipe, and then I'm going to flip it around so that way it's completely enclosed, and then I can tape it here on the back, hide all the tape back here. So this is after I uh, put the plastic wrap over the exposed bars, and I'm found out I didn't have a hair dryer, so I'm just going to let it sit out in the sun and let the sun heat shrink it, and try and get some of the wrinkles out. So here's a completed uh, enclosure now. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this side right now since it's nice and easy. Um, so with your foam board, cut the piece to fit the length of the pipe you cut. And so this is going to fit like this. You notice on the edges here it's going to have some overlap. Um, so you have a couple of options. You can either use the original blocks and slide them in like that. Or um, you just trim off this little bit and you could get that to fit inside. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the brackets that I'll provide the file link for and um, just bolt them on, two on each side. Okay, after a little trimming, um, I got it to fit snug in front of the back, in the back brackets here. And I'm going to use these 
uh, clips that I made. Now these are designed so that it'll fit flush, flat with the sides of the pipe. And that way it goes around like this. And hold it in place. And it'll go around all the, the whole thing. I'm just going to focus on this part right now. So you're going to need a some sort of awl and your M3 nuts, bolts, and washers to clamp this all in together. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. 